Hi, everyone. This is your host, uh, Maheen, and welcome to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast, where we're here to shine a spotlight on the vibrant world of small businesses. Our discussion today will focus on the complexities of cloud adoption for Canadian SMEs, particularly tackling hidden fees, technology lock-ins, and the crucial issue of data sovereignty. Joining us today on this episode is Estelle Azamard, the Vice President of Americas at OVH Cloud, a trailblazer in the cloud computing arena. And since joining OVH Cloud, Estelle has been pivotal in expanding the company's footprint across Canada and Latin America, including the recent launch of New Data Center in Toronto. Her leadership is marked by a strong commitment to transparency and diversity in tech. So stay tuned as we dive into how cloud services can become more accessible and trustworthy for small businesses under Estelle's expert guidance. Uh, welcome to the show, Estelle. How are you today? Very good. Thank you. You? Very well. Thank you. It's wonderful to have you with us to share your expertise, especially at a time when cloud technology is becoming increasingly integral um, you know, to business operations. I mean, your insights will be very invaluable and we're quite thrilled to explore how SMEs uh, can navigate the cloud landscape more effectively. Now, before we begin, Asa, let's dive into our first area of focus, which is hidden fees in cloud services. It's it's quite a common hurdle that can really disrupt budget planning for SMEs. Um, Asa, can you please describe some of the most frequent hidden fees that SMEs might encounter when they start using cloud services? Yes, but, well, the cost of cloud has always been a, a recurring topic in the cloud sector, and uh, they can take several forms. Uh, we, we can see a lot of hidden fees, like, for example, uh, unexpected uh, charge for data transfer. Um, we also have fees for ex exceeding usage limits, uh, also complex price pricing structures. And now you need to be an expert in order to understand your invoice. And uh, also the fact that some cloud providers uh, invoice egress fees. If we focus on egress fees, for example, what is it? Uh, in fact, they represent data transfer fees that are charged by a cloud provider when a user wishes to leave for another cloud provider. Mostly it's artificial fees because it costs nothing for the cloud provider, but it's resulting from very aggressive commercial strategies. So, um, there is many ways so we can be sure that organizations will stay in control of uh, their cost of their cloud bill. Uh, one is to be sure to simplify the pricing model. So all cloud providers should simplify the pricing models and provide clear uh, upfront information uh, about all potential costs uh, so it's transparent and so the customers can understand his invoice. It seems to be uh, very basic, but it's not always the case. Um, we, there is uh, today many players uh, in the industries that are pointing out uh, the fact that this is anti-competitive. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can see that the recent legislation in Europe, for example, shows uh, that we are ending in the right direction. Uh, for example, the European Data Act has put a pressure recently uh, on the hyperscalers who announced that then they would stop to charge uh, fees uh, when a customer wants to go out uh, from their uh, environment. So it's good. We are going in the right uh, in the right direction, but we need now to be sure that this uh, will apply by this uh, by this hyperscaler. That's a very crucial insight for SMEs to really maintain transparency and control over their cloud expenditures. But what strategies do you recommend for SMEs to really avoid these unexpected costs? And how can cloud providers address the issue of hidden costs to build trust with their customers? Well, again, uh, I think the organization must be sure to stay in control in uh, in their budget and opt for a cloud provider that will uh, that will offer a predictive pricing and a transparent pricing. There is no reason why an organization shouldn't be able to understand it is in, is invoice today. That seems totally uh, totally crazy uh, in, in a way. Um, so um, I think uh, opting for a trusted cloud will uh, make the difference and organization must be aware that they need to stay in control of their budget. The control of a budget for an enterprise today is a question of strategic autonomy. Right. 
That's 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 very crucial insight for SMEs to really maintain transparency and control over their cloud expenditures. Now, I really want to take a moment um, and connect with our audience as well. Um, listeners, as we navigate the complexities of cloud costs, it's crucial to really keep an eye out on uh, those hidden fees that Estelle just mentioned, because for all the entrepreneurs, you know, that, that are listening, think about your current subscriptions and services. Like, are there any potential costs that you're not aware of? And, you know, this is a perfect opportunity to really review and ensure that you're fully in control of your expenditures, because transparency isn't just beneficial, it's quite essential uh, for your business's financial health. Now, SL technology lock-ins can hold back innovation and flexibility. It's 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 a significant concern for many businesses adopting new technologies. What is the impact and common signs for a business heading towards a technology lock-in situation? Uh, yeah, so the impact of being locked uh, with one cloud provider is very important regarding the flexibility, regarding innovation for organizations, and regarding also the migration cost we, we just talked about. Um, sometimes an organization will have no choice but to stay with one cloud provider, and then they will face huge expenses. So it's very important that the organization, they question themselves. Uh, regarding their ability to stay in control of their strategic autonomy, especially in the digital uh, area. I think it is uh, crucial now when we know that a substantial part of uh, their operational costs uh, are represented uh, by digital uh, digital expenses and mainly cloud, uh, cloud ex expenses. So in order to be sure uh, to reduce the technology lock-in, there is uh, three measures that should be uh, adopted. So um, organizations should be careful uh, to this and cloud provider should uh, be sure to adopt these three points. So first, adoption of open standards. Uh, we're talking about open source technology. So we can ensure uh, compatibility and interoperability across the different cloud services. So this is very important. And OVH Cloud has always been a promoter of open source solutions. For example, we are a member of the OpenStack Foundation and all our public cloud uh, solutions are based on open source solutions. Uh, it's also important for an organization to be sure to uh, not opt for um, what we call proprietary technology. So they should uh, choose standard technology, simple technology uh, that they know. At OVH Cloud, it's what we do. We are offering uh, private cloud solutions on uh, simple technology like uh, VMware, for example, that everybody knows, uh, Nutanix, VM, Zerto, and, and so on. And finally, it's also very important to encourage the multi-cloud strategy. I don't believe that there is today one cloud provider that is suitable for one organization. And 60% of organizations says that they will use in a close future a multi-cloud environments, and many of them, they already use multi-cloud environments. So for that, uh, you need to uh, opt for open APIs, and it's what we do at uh, OVH Cloud. Mm -hmm. It's really important today for organization that they stay in control of their cloud strategy so uh, they say they stay free from technological or commercial lock-in. Right. No, you're right. I mean, ensuring flexibility and avoiding lock-ins are key to fostering a culture of innovation within SMEs. Now, let's also kind of learn how do we prioritize data sovereignty because it is not just about it, it not just a technical issue. Uh, it's really a matter of business integrity and security. Um, SL, we'll talk more and more about data sovereignty, but why should SMEs take it seriously? And how does OVH Cloud ensure that its clients have complete control over the data? Well, uh, the concern regarding data protection is uh, is more and more uh, present in uh, organization, but not, not only also public, uh, public organization, uh, for example. So now there is a growing concern regarding the fact that we need to keep track of uh, our data and to ensure that we are in full control of it. So um, just simply put, um, it is not the case with American cloud providers, for example, because they are submitted to the US Cloud Act. And the US Cloud Act allows uh, federal agencies to access data that are stored on American servers, even if the data is physically located elsewhere. 
Mm-hmm. So data sovereignty is a very important. Data sovereignty is, is different from data residency. You can have your data hosted in Canada, for example, but if it's hosted by an American cloud provider, then this data could be transferred outside of Canada. And this can be a problem for sensitive data or for uh, regulated uh, industries. We can think about the financial sector, for example. We can think also for the uh, healthcare uh, sector, pharmaceutical uh, pharmaceutical industry. Uh, our difference lies in the fact that we are an hyperscaler, like uh, the, uh, the other one. We are one of the top 10 uh, cloud provider at a global level, at a global level. But we are the only one with a European DNA. And consequently, we are out of scope of the application of the Cloud Act. And we are the only cloud provider that is able today to guarantee that data won't be transferred outside of Canada. This is what we call data sovereignty. Right. And maintaining control over data um, is quite foundational for trust and compliance, and especially in today's digital age. And here, you know, let's connect on something that uh, that's not just technical, but also foundational, which is data protection, as you said, Estelle. And you shared some compelling insights on maintaining control over over everybody's, you know, own personal data. And for everyone listening, really think about the security and loyalty of your data storage. You know, think about questions like, are you even aware of where and how your data is being managed? Because this isn't just about compliance. It's really about protecting the backbone of your business in this digital age. Now, looking towards the future, uh, Estelle, uh, cloud computing continues to evolve at a rapid pace. What are some emerging trends in cloud technology that SMEs should be aware of? Well, I think that the most emerging trends uh, that provides the most significant changes now in the market and the way organizations are doing business and even the way uh, the users are um, are using now the technology uh, is uh, is uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, it's been a few years we are talking about artificial intelligence, but now with the launch of ChatGPT, uh, not even two years ago, uh, there is a huge, huge acceleration in the market. Organization, all organizations are thinking, how am I going to use AI in my business? Or the other organization are already using it. And this um, AI uh, technology uh, requires more and more computational resources. Uh, we are talking about the GPU, uh, but it requires so more computational resources. And you need also to stay in control of your budget. You also need to uh, acquire new level of competency. And all uh, this has also impact uh, on the society, on the environment. For example, um, so at OVH Cloud, our ambition is to democratize access to AI, uh, no matter uh, the budget of organization and no matter the level of expertise. So we will be able to uh, democratize uh, the access to this technology. Mm-hmm. The staying ahead of trends really allows businesses to leverage the full potential of cloud computing, ensuring that they remain competitive and innovative. Uh, Sel, before we conclude, can you share one piece of final advice for small business leaders who are apprehensive about transitioning to cloud-based solutions? Yes, well, I think uh, first, multi-cloud strategy is the future. Uh, so now you need to be sure to stay in control of your digital uh, digital strategy. To stay in control of your digital strategy, that means what? That means you stay in control of your budget. You stay in control of the technology. That means that you should have a choice to go back if you want to. And you stay in control of your data. And maybe one last thing I would like to add is the digital transformation also has a huge impact on the environment today, on the carbon footprint. Uh, So we know that the digital transformation uh, has a carbon footprint that is almost equivalent at the uh, civil aviation uh, with a 4% of the total, uh, uh, total emissions at a global level. Uh, So also opt for a cloud provider uh, that uh, is solid uh, regarding uh, his um, sustainable policy. Right. Thank you so much again, uh, Estelle, for sharing your expertise and invaluable insights uh, and for your time on this podcast today. I mean, we've delved 
very deep into key aspects of, you know, cloud adoption, covering very crucial topics from avoiding hidden costs to really safeguarding data um, and embracing future te uh, cloud technology. So again, thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, uh, listeners, this was the end of our discussion with Estelle Asmard. Uh, these discussions are very essential for any SME looking to thrive in the digital age. Uh, we'd like to extend our special thanks to our exclusive partners, RBC, our exclusive banking partner, UPS, as a shipping partner, Zero, our accounting software partner, uh, Constant Contact, our exclusive email partner, and IEG, our hospitality partner. Their support is what makes this platform possible and enriches our community of listeners. Remember, for more insights into connect with like-minded professionals, please subscribe to the Canadian SME Small Business Magazine at canadiansme.ca. Uh, please stay informed, stay inspired, and until next time, continue pushing the boundaries of what's possible for your business. Thank you.